Hey guys, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. Today in this video, we're pouring a concrete floor with a trench drain, and it's just one man, it's just me and my daughter Tia helping me. So I wanted to show you guys how you can pour a concrete floor by yourself if you got just a little bit of help. And with, with Tia's help here, it just made my job a heck of a lot easier on this job. Now my channel is all about concrete. If you're new here, we do all kinds of concrete stuff on this channel. So if you like that stuff, you know, please go ahead down there and hit subscribe. Today, this is going to be kind of like a greenhouse. That, that thing you see in the middle of the floor, that's a trench drain. So the concrete floor slopes from the outside down towards the trench drain on both sides. What was kind of cool about having that trench drain in here is it gave me a, a point, a reference point to screed from, and it also kind of broke this up into almost like two different little pours. So it, we're pouring one side first, then we'll just move the truck over and do the other side. Now I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting the concrete spread out, pulling the wire up, leveling it out best I can with my come along, while T is mag in the edges. So. That's a big help for me, having her mag the edges out for me, because as you can see right here, when I go to screed, I use those magged edges as my points to screed from. Now, I like, I like wet screeding like this. That's why I don't have a longer screed. Now, you could have a longer screed and go right off the top of the wall and right off the top of the trench drain if you want and pull it right off that. Personally for me because I do it every day. I just like to wet screed so mine's a little bit shorter and Then I can just use those magged pads to screed off from and as you can see Tia is kind of Pulling the concrete back if it's too high and pushing a little bit up if I need it And that's just making the whole screeding process a lot faster so I don't really have to stop I can just start at one end and work my way right down to the other end now what she's doing is she's continuing to mag float the edges and get that ready for me as I'm back in the truck over on the other side. Let me know down in the comments, you guys that pour concrete are thinking about pouring. I mean, are you doing it by yourself? Do you have some help? Who do you have for help? Do you have family members? Do you have friends? What kind of help do you get when you pour your concrete? Let me know down in the comments. Now my other two guys, Luke and Darren, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I got Luke and Darren. They're they're on another job right now, pouring a, probably a garage floor, I think, this morning. So we split up. We had to get two done today, so we decided to split up and just pour them both at the same time. So I'll get that finished out right there, and, and Tia will kind of finish that out as I get started over there on the other side. I don't know what those big... That, see that big black tube in the corner? There's one in each in the opposite corners of this thing. I'm not sure what the guy's going to use those for. We actually did the vapor barrier. I put a 15 mil vapor barrier down. That's what that yellow plastic is. And then we put the wire mesh in here too. I didn't have my slab bolsters. They didn't have any in stock. So that's why we're just pulling the wire up into the concrete today. There's just there's such a supply shortage of product this year that it was hard to, it's just hard to get everything. It was even hard to get the wire. So we do use fiber mesh in the concrete too. My, the mix I like for my floors is a, is a 3500 with fiber mesh. So we use that on all our floor pours. Now you can see here that Tier is actually doing the bull floating. So, I mean, that's, that's a big, big help as, as I'm over there pouring out more concrete. So that speeds up the whole pour, having someone that can just do a little bit of the things that you would normally have to do if you were here by yourself. I'm going to sh also show you the finishing process, how we finish this today. Uh, we, we put a pretty nice finish on it. We also got it sawed today, so you're going to get to see both the finishing and the sawing and how we do all that in one day. I kind of like to kick my footprints in as I'm screeding so I continue to move backwards as I'm screeding. If you're new to screeding, if you haven't done it much, you may just pull it two or three times, set it down, set step back and just reset and then and then continue that process as you go. 
You can see how helpful Tia is there pulling that concrete back. There I am tugging on the wire again. Keeping that wire up. Once you get that wire up and you get those rocks, this the concrete's got three quarter inch stone in it. So once you get the rocks under the wire mesh, even when you go back in and walk on it like I am now, it doesn't go all the way back down to the bottom. It stays up in that bottom third. You can feel it under your feet afterwards as you're walking on it that it's it's not all the way back down. So I'll get that screeded out, finish that out, and you can see Tia's going to go over there and, and finish bow floating for me. And then, you know, we'll get the tools washed up. We did put a little bit of accelerator in this today because we knew it was cloudy and it wasn't going to dry very fast. So we, we just put a little bit of accelerator in the concrete as well as, you know, my normal water reducer is in it too. So here we are finishing. This was probably about an hour later. And... The homeowner, he didn't want like a, a smooth as glass finish, so we're not going to use a power trowel. I'm going to finish this by hand. So my first thing I want to do is my timing. You know, I want to be able to get on this at just the right time and not sink in. But also, it does not I don't want it to be too hard because i got to go all the way around this. Now, T is going to go around and do all the edges for me, outside edges. The first thing I do is I what I call I, I cut that drain down. So any any little bit of concrete around that trench drain that that may have sagged just a little bit and gotten a little higher than the drain I want to cut that down and I want to match that drain exactly so this is the first process this is pretty normal when you when you pour around a drain like this it's gonna no matter what slump you use it's gonna sag just a little bit whether it's a sixteenth an eighth or maybe even a quarter that's definitely not a quarter inch sag. That's probably more like an eighth of an inch right there I'm cutting off. And I I want to make sure when I'm done finishing this that that slab, that concrete matches that drain perfectly so the water will run right into it. And also it looks just better. It looks a lot more professional. So I'm mag floating the surface, getting out all those bow float lines and, and filling anything in, bringing up some nice paste. T is taking care of all my outside edges for me, which really speeds up the whole process for me as far as finishing goes. And I'm just cutting down that drain. That's what that's the term we use. We're cutting down the drain as I'm mag floating it out. And then I'll just, you know, it's soft enough so that the stuff I cut out where it roughens it up, it fills it right back nice and e nice and uh, easy for me, so it's not too bad finishing. You can see I'm not removing a whole heck of a lot, just a little bit as I go. Yeah, you can see that paste right there on the surface really good. That's a good shot of it right there. So I'm just working that, working that surface. If I pressed in on that with my fingers, I could probably press in maybe an eighth of an inch or so. That's how soft it is, but it's it's pretty firm right now. And then what I'll do is I'll I'll just set those to the side for a minute because I know I'm going to get right back on it shortly here and, and hand trial it. Right after I get done mag floating it, now I'm going to go around the edges with my hand trial just to stay ahead of it. Because we are going to steel trial this a couple times to get it a little bit smoother. That's what it looks like after the first hit. So it's definitely smoother than a bow float, but it still has some rough texture to it. You know, it's I wouldn't want to leave it like that and try to have to broom it to sweep it. It's still a little bit rough after the mag float. And the homeowner did want this kind of a non-slip surface, but he didn't want it broom finished. He didn't want it that rough. So we're going to hit it with a hand trial a couple times and get it a little bit smoother and easier to clean for him so he can hose it down. But leave a a little bit of fuzz on what I call fuzz on the surface from the hand trial. Now there's a heck of a lot less cutting down on this hand trial because you did about 99% of it when you mag floated it out. So now I'm just making sure when I hand trial it that I'm cleaning it up around that drain as I go and getting it nice and smooth. I'm 
just working my way back. Using those skids makes hand troweling a lot easier. I'll have a link for those skids down in the description, guys. If you want to get some of those, you know, if you're thinking of finishing some concrete, that's the way to finish right there by hand is using those skids. They got some built-in knee pads, which aren't too bad. You can also wear knee pads if you if you think you need more knee pad protection. I like that hand trowel. It has like the flat bottom and the curved top. It leaves a few less lines for me. Now my guys, Darren and Luke, they like the square ones on the, both the top and the back. So this is the after the second hit. As you can see it's a little bit smoother. Still not quite ready to leave it like that though. So we're going to let it set up for probably 20 or 30 minutes. And then we come back and we'll hit it one more time and then decide if that's smooth enough or not. So now I'm going to go the opposite way. I mean, it doesn't really matter if I go the opposite way. I just like to work those, those trial marks in a little bit differently to hide them. Now it's set up pretty good after this half hour. So it's, it's getting to be pretty smooth at this point. You can kind of tell right there how smooth that's getting. Now we, over the course of a year, we'll hand finish a lot of concrete floors like this, especially as it gets colder. We live in Maine, so starting in November and you know in all the way through March, concrete doesn't set up quite as fast because it's cold or it's even freezing out, and we'll hand finish a lot of concrete floors. So over the years, over the years I've hand finished hundreds of floors like this. If we want, if we want to get this really, really smooth, you know, we'll just keep going over it until it kind of burns out under the hand trowel. It's just a timing thing, really, to get it nice and smooth this way. But you can see, so I'm moving myself backwards now, the opposite direction, and this thing's getting really smooth by now. So we decided after this hit, it had just a tiny little bit of fuzz on it but it was also really smooth so if he needs to sweep it if he needs to hose it down it's going to be really good but it's also not going to be so super slippery that he's going to fall just getting those little marks out right now from the the skids the skids leave a few little marks as you work your way back Now that will eventually all bleach out white, kind of like the concrete walls around the outside edges. You know, you give it, you give it uh, two or three weeks, the, th the concrete cures out, it all turns white, and you're gonna barely be able to see those, those hand white marks after it all cures out white. So we gave it an hour. This stuff was setting up pretty fast, so we could, we could walk on it, not even leave a mark, not even sink in. And the saw, and we're going to cut that. Hopefully, it cracks right off those joints where we're cutting it. Typically, with a trench drain, you know, sometimes it's hard, to, it's difficult to control the cracks off those corners. But I think we'll get it with this one since they're so close to the outside edge. That's my electric soft cut saw. I got two of them, and then I got a gas powered one. It's uh, the X150 Prowler. You, if you've watched any of my other videos, you may have seen us using that one. Darren and Luke have that one today, so I'm just using the little electric one today. And that's made specially just for cutting green concrete like this. It leaves a really nice, a really nice sharp edge. With it's got a diamond blade on it. That goes down about an inch and a quarter with a new blade. So on a four inch, on a four inch floor like this, that's plenty of depth to help control the cracks. That's basically it guys. So let me know down in the comments if you're thinking of pouring your own floor. If this a video like this helps, you know, please hit that like button. Again, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.